The next election is about the kind of country we want to live in and who we want to be as Canadians. Justin Trudeau may arguably be the most experienced campaigner of this election, but he is also about to do something he has never done before. Well, we're going to need those votes out there. Run as a prime minister on a record of his own government, asking to continue the work with another mandate. In October, we've got a choice to make. I am for moving forward. But moving ahead also means looking back at what has and has not been done. Liberals will happily talk more about giving more money to Canadian families with a bigger child tax credit, concluding trade deals, including NAFTA, keeping the economy growing, progressing on the path to reconciliation, and fighting climate change with a carbon tax across the country. But there have been mistakes, too, that are opportunities for Trudeau's opponents. An ill-fated trip to India that was roundly mocked and proved perhaps more trouble than it was worth. A vacation to the Aga Khan's private island which contravened the Ethics Act. At one point you didn't say mistake. to yourself, this is not Obviously. maybe the best thing to do? You never the thought Aga Khan that? is uh, someone who has been a longtime friend uh, of my family's. Electoral promises have been broken, democratic reform abandoned, the promise of balanced budgets left behind. The trust that previously existed between these two individuals and our team has been broken. To say nothing of the SNC-Lavalin controversy, which cost the Prime Minister two cabinet ministers and one of his most trusted advisers, did much damage in public opinion polls and again concluded with the Ethics Commissioner saying Trudeau had broken the rules by trying to pressure his former Justice Minister. And the choice is very clear right now between going back to the cuts and austerity of the Harper years are continuing to move forward. Campaigning is something Trudeau thrives on. Give me high fives. And opponents have seen how underestimating him is a mistake. And the next leader of the Conservative Party of Canada with 51% of the vote, Andrew Scheer. Andrew Scheer has now been leader of the Conservative Party since 2017, beating out more than a dozen others to replace Stephen Harper. Canadians cannot afford four more years of Justin Trudeau. But quickly, he was painted as Harper with a smile. You're either described as the smiling Stephen Harper or Stephen Harper with a smile. Uh, what's, <laughs> what's your take on that description? Well, I, I think that's a, a fairly accurate description. Scheer has never faced a national federal campaign as leader before, but he's been a politician since the age of 25. I know the uh, Honourable Leader of the Opposition will want to avoid using terminology like that. Much of that time was spent in the more neutral role of Speaker of the House of Commons, the youngest ever named. This is what is disgusting about this. They are using the very real threat of hatred and racism in this country yes. to cover up their that's corruption scandal. Yeah. Scheer quickly embraced his role as leader of the official opposition, pushing the Prime Minister to defend his government's record. But at times, the effort to look tough has seemed uncomfortable and forced. <laughs> Scheer is far from a household name. That will be one of his biggest challenges. But his policies will be familiar to Conservatives, dump the carbon tax and give money back to Canadians to spend as they see fit. My plan for Canadians? Lower the cost of living and leave more money in your pockets. Scheer has his own challenges, having supported socially conservative positions, particularly against same-sex marriage, that he is now struggling to defend. Uh, my personal views are that every single Canadian has the same uh, equality rights under the law, and I will continue to uphold that. It may be his first campaign, but conservatives say he's been preparing for months and is ready. As your new leader, Jagmeet Singh is new to politics, at least at the national level. A member of the Ontario legislature since 2011, Singh decided to take the plunge into federal politics in 2017 after Tom Mulcair was pushed out of the NDP. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thanks so much for being here. The jump was a big one, and Singh faced some criticism even from inside his own party for not running for a seat for almost a full year. Can you tell us whether or not your caucus is behind you? in supporting this bill. Uh, at this point, that's, I'm, I'm, you know, just give me a moment, I'm absolutely to clarify. Singh struggled to get a handle on federal politics and the NDP's positions. He has since pushed party policies like universal pharmacare and affordable housing. Imagine, instead, a government in Ottawa that actually works for you. 
Singh has other challenges too. The NDP hasn't raised as much money as it needs for this campaign and has yet to name about half of the candidates across the country. We're out sharing our message, connecting with people. This election could be make or break for Singh, but it may also be a defining moment for the NDP and its future. I love telling people all the reasons why even one Green elected to a parliament or legislature can make a really big difference. This is hardly Elizabeth May's first campaign, but it may be the first one where a real breakthrough is possible. She still holds the title of the first Green Party seat claimed federally in 2011. There was some more success for the party when they managed to add a seat with Paul Manley's by-election win earlier this year. But in many ways, it is the success of the Greens at the provincial level that has given May newfound hope and momentum. The party now has seats in BC, PEI, New Brunswick and Ontario, some 15 elected legislators. So we are facing a larger threat than the human species has ever been faced with before. May has said fighting climate change requires a much more urgent response, and so she is proposing to double Canada's current greenhouse gas reduction targets. Climate change may be of critical importance to many voters, but May will have to defend her ambitious plan like never before. For with more interest comes more scrutiny. One year ago, I decided to offer Canadians a new vision of our country. Maxime Bernier left the Conservative Party last August, bitterly railing against the party that had made him a cabinet minister in Stephen Harper's government and that he had tried to lead and failed. This party is too intellectually and morally corrupt to be reformed. He rather quickly struck out on his own and established the People's Party of Canada. Bernier describes it as a coalition of people fed up with the traditional parties and in favour of what he dubs smart populism. Bernier says he believes in climate change, but denies it is man-made and he'll do nothing to tackle it. Wants to drastically cut taxes and slash immigration levels in Canada. We need to have fewer immigrants, but we need to be sure that these people would be able to integrate our society, to be part of our society. That sentiment in particular has been viewed as anti-immigrant. And while Bernier has tapped into some disaffected voters, he has also attracted neo-Nazis, though he has said they are not welcome in his party. Bernier may be fielding a full slate of candidates and making a real play in this election, but if he cannot shake off those criticisms and grow his support, he may find himself a leader with no party behind him. De toutes les luttes. Celle de la langue française et celle de l'indépendance du Québec. And will there be a resurgence from the sovereignist bloc québécois? Yves-François Blanchette is the fifth leader of the bloc since 2011. The beleaguered party hasn't held official party status in Parliament for the last eight years. The erosion of the sovereignty movement will continue to be a challenge this election. Each of the leaders and their strengths and weaknesses will soon be tested. And on October 21st, Canadians will decide just who deserves electoral success. Okay, Rosie. And, and of course, I mean, bearing in mind we are seven weeks out, the best sense we have right now of how all this shakes out is from the polls. That's right. It can at least give us a sense, right? And CBC's poll tracker is up and running. Our polls analyst, Eric Grenier, is going to update it daily or even more than daily if needed. So here's what his numbers show us right now, Andrew. The Conservatives have led in the polls since February. That's when the SNC-Lavala story broke. But the lead over the Liberals has narrowed over the course of the summer. The two parties really in a virtual tie right now. Let me show you what Eric uh, has found in terms of projections for seats. Each party can win, as you can see there as as well. Uh, the Liberals favored to win the most seats, but whether any party can actually win a majority is still very much a toss-up. Yeah, no doubt. And, and Rosie, do you get to get any sleep over the next few weeks? It's going to be busy. No, I don't think sleep <laughs> is on the agenda, but that's fine. Seven weeks until voting day, and until then, we'll have you covered here on The National. Okay, good stuff. <laughs>